The purpose of this video tutorial is to show how to model a separated slab with infill joists or ribs and this might be similar to a box girder or a separated uh, sandwich panel type system and we're going to discuss some of the limitations and um, some of the approaches that may not work and that do work for this particular type of a model. So we'll go ahead and begin. We're going to start using Adapt Floor Pro. We'll turn off Edge in this example. And we're also going to use um, Adapt RCMP T Design Scope to, to show what the limitations and the allowances are for the use of post tensioning in this type of a structure. So we'll start in our interface here. And we can see we're um, we have a few toolbars open, so let's just close a few of these toolbars that we're not going to be using. We're also going to go up to um, user interface. We'll scroll down to customize, and I'll turn off the large icons so we have a more working space here. So let's set up a grid. And the grid here, we're just going to say is 10 by 10 feet. And we'll assume this the joists are going to be spaced at um, 10 feet. And what we'll have first is we're going to create a beam, or in this case a joist. These joists will be 12 by 20 inches deep. And we're going to space these every 20 feet, and we'll make them 30 feet long. We'll just put a few of those in. And now we're going to create a slab uh, on top of these joists. And we want to have a slab on the top and the bottom of the joist. So we'll create the top slab first. Notice that the default plane we're working in is called current plane. And um, that's important to note here uh, because we're going to reference both of the slabs off of the current plane. So we'll go ahead and create the first slab. This is just an 8 inch slab at the top. And you'll notice if I look at a side view of this, we have that 8 inch slab at the top. And we're actually going to make that a little bit thinner. Let's make it a 3 inch slab. And for our beams, let's make those slightly deeper so we have more of a separation. So I'll select all beams, go to modify item properties. And for the beams, we're going to call them 12 by um, 30, 30 inches deep. I'll say OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy or create a new slab, but I'm going to use an offset. So the offset of this slab is going to be referenced from the current plane. And if I want the top of that slab to be, um, or let's say the, the soffit of the new slab to be at the bottom of the beam, then the offset here is going to have to be 27 inches in this case. So it's the, the beam depth minus the slab thickness, and that will be a negative 27 inch offset. So one of the common mistakes uh, in the program is everything being modeled on the current plane. If we go and create a new slab, prior to inserting the new slab, I'll open the properties menu and select negative offset of 27 inches. In this case, downward is positive. So by negative, I'm meaning downward. And I'm going to stack that slab on top of the current slab. And if we go back to a side view, here everything looks fine. We, we have this kind of a sandwich slab with these separators, these ribs. We want to model this um, particular unit. And we also need to have some sort of vertical supports. So we'll go back to our grid. And I'm just going to add a few uh, columns. So we'll add a column here at each one of these um, Joyce. And if you snap on the wrong location, that's fine. You can always go back and move the um, columns. So we'll move that over. And let's go ahead and save this file. Okay, and then the next thing naturally in the process might be to model post tensioning. So in this case, I'll go to the tendon toolbar, and I'm just going to add some tendons in these beams. Let's turn off some of the snap tools here. Okay. 
So everything in this model uh, will seemingly work. However, when we go to mesh the model, we'll go ahead and mesh the slab, we get an error. We get the fact that two slabs are overlapping on top of one another. So we can't mesh a, a model where two slabs that are overlapped are both referenced from the same reference plane. And that's going to cause us or prohibit us from actually creating a mesh in order to analyze the structure. So the next thing would be, well, how do we model um, this set of slabs that are separated by a joist? And so what we'll do is we'll go back to a, a side view. And we're going to insert a new plane it's between bottom and current plane. So we'll go here to the level assignment manager. I'm going to go to bottom plane. I'm going to say, select add. And this particular plane is going to be at a specific um, height, which is going to be 30 inches below the current plane. So we'll call this uh, plane 2.5 feet. Okay, this actually needs to be 7.5 feet, and then the current plane will be um, 10 feet. So this should give us the right separation here. set back to 10 feet. feet here. The total should be 10. So there's what we want there. And what we're going to do, again, everything that we have current is, is represented on the current plane. We're working in what we call global mode right now. And if we go to single level mode, you can see that at plane 4, there's no slab associated with this plane, but at plane, if I go up one level to current plane, both slabs are located at this plane. So what I'm going to do is select um, my tendons, and I'll press control and select this lower slab, and I'm going to move those to the uh, plane 4. In this case, we'll say OK, and those have now been moved down to plane 4. back to a 3D view. And we can see from the side view that this slab still has that 27 inch offset associated with it. So we're going to take that and just go back to location and reset that back to zero. So now we have um, this slab and we're going to Go into each of the beams, make sure that those are referenced properly. So if I double click on the beam, or excuse me, the tendon, you can see that the tendon uh, reference points are, are not correct. If I select zero, and then just go back and reset this, let's just say 15 and 15. Uh, let's make sure those are referenced off of the right location. So these, these uh, tenons actually need to be referenced off of the current plane because the beams are still referenced off of the current plane. So we're going to select those again. That was just a mistake on my part. We'll select the tendons and assign those back to the uh, current plane. Okay, so now we have a model. Uh, that contains two separated slabs in terms of two different levels. The beams are still referenced off of the current plane. The tendons are referenced off of the current plane. We're also going to select all of our columns and just copy those down. So we'll select column by type and I'll copy those down one time. And again if you go to a side view these are copied down to the bottom plane. Now What's important to note here is that in the first run, we tried to analyze the model in single level mode. Now we need to analyze the model in global mode because if I'm in single mode, it's only going to uh, uh, analyze one level at a time. We get back to essentially the same problem we had initially. So in global mode, if I um, go ahead and, and uh, mesh the structure, you can see under FEM mesh, this is grayed out. The reason it's grayed out is because I need to activate edge, so I'll go back to the onset of the program, turn edge on, 
and I'll reopen my file here. Go back to multi-level mode. In multi-level mode, I'm now able to mesh the structure. So I'll mesh both slabs with the beams. And we're going to go ahead now and run the analysis. I'll just analyze this for the service uh, total condition. And we have a reliability problem. So we'll take a look and see what this, this result looks like. And th there are issues I'm showing you, you here in this example, the issue with this um, type of an arrangement. If we go to FEM, View Analysis Results, and look at the slab and the deflections, we'll just take a look at the deflections. We can see that the beams are not properly um, connected. In this case, you can see the beam deflections are essentially dropping off on the right-hand side. And if I go to the 3D view, the slab is completely unsupported um, at the top. And so if we uh, test this again, we're going to pre-process established component connectivity. This just establishes the offsets between both sets of columns vertically, as well as the connection between the beam and the column. And we're going to reanalyze the structure. And again, we get a stability warning, and we get essentially the same result. And what's happening is the beams in this case are referenced only to the current plane, which is the topmost plane. They're actually not referenced to both the top and the bottom slab. So we, we get this situation where we get an unstable model. Now, the only way to model and to analyze this type of structure we have a split slab with filler beams is to use walls and we'll go ahead now and um, well, let's clear out the mesh we're going to remodel this with walls the limitation is that we cannot model tendons in walls so I'm going to select all of my tendons and we'll also select the uh, beams I'll get rid of my beams here and I'll go to a plan view and in the plan view we'll go and navigate vertically to the current plane. We're now on current plane and I'm going to add walls and this wall in this case I'll go to the properties will be a 12 inch wall and when I model this from column over to column go back to a side view you can see this wall is only modeled between the floor height so um, that's one reason we split the the floors it is so that the slabs don't overlap so this inherently has a correct uh, height for the wall we don't have to adjust let's say the offsets of the walls the vertical locations or offsets so this is our set of um, ribs in this case and then I'll go back to the global structure and we have now our uh, we have our connection with the bottom slab now we could drop the wall by three inches if we wanted to we could take each of the walls for location it's actually the column and turn the column off and at the vertical bottom we could say we want to drop this negative uh, I'm sorry three inches vertically and that extends it down to the bottom side of the slab. But in both cases, the wall would be connected to the uh, lower slab. We'll just do this consistently for all of them. And we could do them um, multiple at the same time using modify, modify item properties. So if I go to wall, vertical, bottom, say OK, that will drop the last two. And now we have slab that looks like uh, this. Again, we'll mesh the structure and we're going to analyze the structure. So we'll go to FVM Analyze and this now runs properly. So we'll go to FVM and just view the analysis results and in, do, in so doing we can see um, the displacements in this slab relative to the presence of the walls and you can see here the walls is, is bending it's it, the, the difference between a wall and a beam in this case is the wall is meshed 
not only um, horizontally, but, but the, the slab is meshed horizontally, but the wall is meshed vertically over two divisions. Um, and there's not there, there's a node at the top and the bottom of the wall, or multiple nodes, one at the top, one at the middle, one at the bottom of the of the wall. A beam is only represented by frame elements, and um, you have essentially a start and end nodes at the centroid of the beam element. So this is the solution with um, uh, with walls replacing the beams. Again, the limitation here is that we cannot model the post-tensioning in the walls. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.